So good morning, Sandra Pally the Sandini. I am thrilled that you are here and excited to be doing the day three of this, the grounding guide today. And I love this tree. This is a tree that I uh, took a picture of in Scotland when we were mountain biking there. I just thought it had a lot of character. Um, and I know these little bumps usually mean that there's some sort of irritation happening in the tree, but I just thought it looked really cool. <clears throat> So I would just would like to start with this beautiful um, mantra because I feel that since we started with the higher self, let's continue working with her. I align myself this day with my higher self for the highest good and the greatest good of all. And this picture is taken in Montana mountain biking in Montana. <laughs> All of my pictures are, are essentially my, my photos because I, I love taking photos. So today we're working with the grounded guide. I'd also like to say hi to Shen Shi. She's uh, traveled a, a long distance to be where she's at right now. So it's kind of cool that she's on with us as well. <clears throat> I reached out to my guides uh, yesterday actually and, and immediately got a vision of a tall dark guide as though in a long brown cloak. He was pointing at the ground and stamped his feet. Yes, it's that simple to ground oneself is by literally stamping your feet. Okay, so, so that's one of your first clues as grounding as well. <clears throat> there are many grounding guides in human spirit and animal form, including any animate object too. So animate is something live inanimate is something that is you know say man-made um like a countertop or something like that however <laughs> i honestly feel that anything around me whether it's it's a house whether it's a doorknob whether it's anything i feel that we have the ability to use these things as grounding material okay uh and and they they hold energy that's why because of the energies in them so an animate object could be trees, it could be crystals, it could be rock, even though you wouldn't normally think that a, a rock would be animate. Crystals, um, crystals all have an energy being within them. They have this soul energy within each of them. And that's why they have those properties that are good for grounding, good for uh, doing meditations and all these different healing properties and things. That's why they are considered an animate object. <clears throat> I noticed in my earlier years of awareness how my palms would help someone. So what I mean by this is if somebody was around me and they were feeling quite anxious, I would actually ask them if I was able to place my hands on them. And when they said yes, then what I would do would place a hand on their back between their shoulder blades and then a hand on their front between their chest, uh, kind of in the sternum area. And I would just stand there and just literally hold them like that. And the energy that flowed between the palms of my hands would really help with that area of the, uh, the heart chakra. So it was quite beautiful. <clears throat> so I'm just taking a moment to mute some of you there. There we go. Uh, and what, what happened with that was it would bring the person's awareness of their breath, whether subconsciously or consciously, they would have the ability to actually take a breath again, right? So it's that importance of feeling that breath, one breath at a time, that was very, very powerful. And it would just center that person so that they felt more capable. <clears throat> and People I've met have also taught me ways to ground myself. One of those ways was creating a pink bubble and filling it with this light. So take a moment, close your eyes. Take a moment to imagine yourself standing there, sitting there, laying there, whatever position. It really has no bearing on the bubble. And create this bubble around yourself. This bubble is beautiful. It's flexible has the ability to move in or out. 
and fill it with this beautiful pink light. Take a breath into that. Mm. Beautiful. This bubble has the ability to create a positive energy around you. You're consciously creating positive energy around yourself. And you can actually do this with other people, with other places, uh, with other animals. And just by consciously setting it in motion. So right now, why don't we do that? Why don't we send or create, not so much send, but why don't we create a beautiful pink bubble around the people we love? And now when I say the people we love, we there's no need to think of this person's name, this person's name, this person's name. We're just going to go the people we love because this touches everybody that we know that we have uh, esteem for, that we care about. And that way no one gets left out by accident and we don't have to worry about somebody getting left out. So for a moment, let's create this pink bubble around the people we love. So imagine that they are either all individually, wherever they are, and it really has no bearing again um, on whether you know specifically where they are, or you can actually put them all in a space, like consciously feel that they're all in one place and create this beautiful bubble around them, whichever feels easiest and, and resonates for you. So create this beautiful pink bubble. And feel the love in your heart for these people. And ask that love and joy and a beautiful day be bestowed upon them in this beautiful energy. Wonderful. And again, you can feel the energy, how very nice it feels to be passing all of this grounding energy on through ourselves to everyone that we love. Another one that I was taught was filling myself with three colors. So this one too is very, very magical. Um, I learned this from a beautiful lady who is uh, an incredible energetic healer in her own right. So what you do is uh, whatever the first color is that pops into your mind, use that color. This can change every single time that you do this exercise, or it could stay the same. There's no reason to stress over the colors that are coming through. Just allow whatever your energetic field requires at this time. So imagine a color. Beautiful. Allow that color to come up through the soles of your feet. Feel how that energy is rising up through your legs, through your knees, all the way up to the tops of your thighs, through your hips, through your pelvis. I know some of you prefer to go much slower doing this. Do understand that as I'm doing this, this is working at this speed as well. You can do this really quickly or you can do this very slowly. Whatever you feel the need for you doing it when you're doing it by yourself. Allowing this color to continue to flow up through your torso, through your stomach and rib cage. Doing this beautiful connection with your heart space. Coming through your shoulders all the way through your arms and hands, up through your neck and head, and feel how it flows over you, just like one of those chocolate fondue fountains does. Imagine a second color. 
first one that pops into your head. Allow that color to come up through the soles of your feet again. And it's literally filling your physical body, your energetic body with this color coming through your ankles, coming up through your knees, up through your hips. Beautiful energy swirling in your pelvis area, coming up through your torso, stomach, rib cage, making a beautiful connection with your heart space. Coming up the rest of the way through your shoulders, arms and hands, up through your neck and head, and again, flowing over. Whatever your body is feeling during this process, just allow that to occur. I know for myself right now, I feel tingling on the top of my head in that crown chakra area. But also too, I feel like the hair on my body is standing up. If you feel nothing at all, that's absolutely fine. Just allowing that beautiful energy to continue to flow as a third color pops into your head. Beautiful. Allowing this energy to come up through your soles of your feet. Coming all the way up through your knees hips, pelvis, remembering to breathe through your belly, rib cage, this incredible energy of this color coming through your heart, making a beautiful connection, coming up through your shoulders, arms and hands, through your neck, head, and flowing over all of you. Feel the sense of peace that you have with that. Beautiful. <clears throat> That's another way to ground yourself as well. So even though we are here to need a grounding guide, I'm showing you the way that people have either taught me or that I've learned myself. <clears throat> Guides have taught me a few as well. <clears throat> the brain slide, for instance. I love the brain slide. It was because of a trip to United States to Disneyland actually that I learned the brain slide. I was on a ride that really went against what I really enjoyed doing. Uh, it was a type of ride that I would prefer to stay on the sidelines and watch rather than be on. But given that we were on a family vac vacation and my children wanted me to be on this ride, I went on this ride. These rides usually nauseate me. <laughs> so I, uh, I had to do something. I had to do something that was going to get me through this, this ride. So essentially what had happened was that every time we came to an area on the ride that caused my stomach to do weird things, I chose instead to go, wee. <laughs> And by the time I got to the end of the ride, I was in my glory. I had had so much fun and I really had stepped into the excitement of the ride. And I realized afterwards that this was my little you really getting involved and enjoying the ride. So that's how the brain slide came about. I am because of course these rides all have these swoops and you're going down and that. So that's where the slide comes in. So imagine you're, small little you on the top of your head. Imagine a slide going down into your heart space and have that little you slide down the slide and feel the woohoo wee. <laughs> wow. 
And again, the feeling, feel the feeling of that. That's precious. You can also do the brain slide in another version on a swing. So imagine if you like a, your little you on a swing in your heart space. And imagine that you are pushing, your higher self even, is pushing your little you on the swing. Because some people don't care for slides. So this swing works just as well. And just imagine that little you being pushed by your higher self on the swing and how much fun that is. Um, some of us have grandchildren, some of us have uh, younger cousins, uh, younger siblings, and uh, what else? Um, grandchildren, I said that, I guess. Um, children. And just um, imagine how they felt when we were pushing them on the slide and, and feel the energy of that with your little you. <clears throat> So that's the uh, brain slide, but in a swing instead. <clears throat> Another way to ground is by rooting like a tree. <clears throat> and I, when I first started doing my practice, uh, working with energy, doing energy work with people, doing Reiki and orthobionomy, this was one of the things that was really coming through very, very strongly as the clients would lay on the table they would be asked to imagine a tree and that they were a tree. So close your eyes for a moment and just imagine that you are a tree. And your tree can be whatever type of tree that pops into your mind. There's no right or wrong. It just is what it is. It could be a little tree. It could be a grand master of a tree. And feel how your legs are the stem, your torso and legs are the, the big stem part of the tree. Your arms are the branches and your head is the top of the tree. And also feel how your feet are in the dirt on the ground. And that from your feet, are these beautiful roots that are digging deep and firmly into the ground. And from each one of these big roots that is going into the ground are smaller roots. And smaller roots are coming off of that. And smaller roots are coming off of that and smaller roots are coming off of that, almost like silica, like little threads. Feel how entrenched your energy is in Mother Earth right now. This is also a beautiful way to actually communicate with Mother Earth, with other trees. They have an incredible system, trees do, of speaking with each other through their roots and through the dirt of the earth. <clears throat> Another way I found that was very easy for me to ground and that I was shown on one of my mountain biking rides was to actually place a hand on a tree and, and, and then the other hand on my heart. And I would just stand there and feel the energy of that tree and feel how comforting it was for myself. So you can do that as well right now too. You physically don't have to be beside a tree. Just imagine a tree. You can imagine the one that was in the photograph at the beginning of this, or imagine a tree that is outside in your yard, or one that you love to pass on your way to the park, or on the way to the grocery store, or any of those places. So just feel the energy of the tree and imagine that you uh, have your hand on its bark and place your other hand on your heart. And take a couple breaths. Oh, 
What a beautiful connection. <clears throat> Another way to ground is to go through your chakras, ground up. Now, many of us know the seven normal chakras, which are the root, sacral chakra, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, and crown chakra. But I actually have a few others in there that I use as well. I actually uh, include the one that's beneath the feet. It's called the earth star. So that one feels like this beautiful magic ball of roots that's beneath my, my feet. So sometimes I'll throw that in. Um, however, for the most part, when I'm on a mountain bike ride, I actually will just start with my root chakra, depending on how, how, how uh, intimidating the territory is when I'm riding my bike. Um, this type of exercise with the chakras from the ground up, can also be used like the brain slide. It's something that you can go through very rapidly or you can take the time to do it. Uh, any of these exercises, you could do them very rapidly or take more time to do them. It depends on what you need. Sometimes just zipping through them is enough to, to actually ground you. Uh, other times you may find that you need a little bit more. For myself, um, this chakra one, I actually use this quite frequently out on my mountain biking rides. Well, not quite frequently, but because it sounds like I go on this in this terrifying area to mountain bike and that's not the case but there are some areas that are definitely intimidating so what I do in that case then is I'm standing there over my bike and I'll literally think about my root chakra I think about the solar sorry the sacral the solar plexus the heart the throat the third eye. I actually use a pineal chakra as well and my crown chakra. And I, even as I just say those words, I almost feel as though there's this beautiful line of energy vortexes within my body, these energy portals, and how they literally are coming online as I consciously think about them. And that grounds me enough to go over this intimidating area on my mountain bike. So this is something that can be used uh, uh, at any time for anything, just like any of these other exercises can be. I've spoken about how the brain slide can be used when we're going into meetings, when we're um, having a conflict with a, with a person and this sort of thing. And each of these, like this going through the chakras from the ground up, you can do the same thing right it's it's just you can do it with your eyes open or your eyes closed it's just a quick little way to ground yourself and feel much better in the energies so with this knowledge i stepped into knowing there are grounding guides as i mentioned i've learned from other people i've learned from my own guides and there are many different types of guides that are around <clears throat> So now that you've opened to more energy and feelings with your higher self and little you, we'll meet a grounding guide. Trees, crystals, or any rock, light colored, light, color, and the divine source are all rooted deeply, either to Mother Earth or the multiverses around us. Now I use the word multiverses instead of universe because it, it's pretty well a given fact, a scientific fact, that there are more than one universes, that we happen to be in our solar system, but there are other solar systems around. And we, um, as we get further into the spiritual world, we start to understand that we have come from other places besides Earth. And that's why I use the word multiverses in, instead of universes. <clears throat> so. Um, we're going to go into a meditation and then we'll do a question and answer. This is a beautiful monkey puzzle tree that I took a photo of again in Scotland. And um, if anyone's ever seen a monkey puzzle tree up close, they're really quite interesting looking. It's almost as though um, it's a, a, it's kind of like a pine tree that's mixed with a cactus or something like that. Cause they look like they've got little pokey points uh, on each of the branches, um, almost like fins, I guess, or um, scales scales like a, a snake they're quite interesting looking 
So I am uh, going to just make sure that everybody's muted. I believe everybody is, and I'm really thankful that each one of you are here. So thank you for participating. And I am going to turn off my video. And everybody could just take a breath into the meditation. Take a breath into being that tree, first of all. I'm going to call in the directions of the east, elements of the wind, and the cultures of the east as well. And I call them the cultures because there are so many different types of energies all over both our earth as well as all of the multiverses. And that's why I call them the different cultures. And it's always for the highest good and for the most benevolent reasons. Calling in the direction and elements and cultures of the south, fire, and the west, and the water, and the western cultures, as well as the north. Elements of the earth and the cultures of the north. Calling in everything within myself and outside of myself. And when I say myself, I refer to each of you. Asking for my mind, body, and soul to do what it needs to do, to connect with grace and ease, with a grounding guide that will present themselves either right away or during the process. Stepping into being open, with no expectations, no limitations and being okay with the outcome. This or something better. We have created a beautiful sacred space calling in the elements and the directions and the cultures. And we are in our heart space at this time. Feel the energy of your heart. Feel the vibration possibly as it beats. It's connection with the lungs as you breathe. And feel the energy that's coming through you, through your heart, and how it's coming out the front of you. And as it's coming out the front of you, this beautiful portal is opening like an energy vortex. The energy of this vortex feels welcoming, feels loving, and feels very grounding. And we willingly step towards this energy vortex. and into this energy vortex. And it is like this beautiful energy tube that we are pulled into and we are traveling within it. We are traveling within it towards a grounding guide. And we can see many things 
or get the sense of many things going by as we're traveling through this tube of energy. And even though this tube is going in all directions and that we feel very comfortable. And we can feel how this energy is drawing us to a specific point. And as we come to this specific point, we can feel our energetic body landing on the feet. And as you're standing there, in front of you is this incredible master. And by master, I mean this ancient one, this wise one, this sage, this shaman-like figure. Whatever gender this sage is, is perfect for you. Feel what your sage is wearing. how they're dressed. Whatever thought pops into your mind, go with that. Trust that, accept that, believe that. This sage is here for you. Do they have a hat? Are they only hairless or bald? What color are the clothes? What color is the skin? What color is the hair? This beautiful sage would love to walk with you. And so you proceed down this path. And as you are walking on this path, feel the connection to you, that you have with this whole area, with this sage. Feel the energy of the things that the sage is showing you. Whether you understand or actually see or know that they are showing you something, that keyword know, know that you are being shown things. If you are 
not conscious of the things you're being shown, know that you are conscious at a subconscious level. You are walking to the edge of this magnificent area. And that you can see out with your sage, the two of you stand, and you can see out into the great expanse of all that there is. And when I say the all that there is, it's the fairies, the dragons, the tulips, the angels, the animals, our loved ones who've passed. There's castles, there's trees, There's orbs of light. Feel the energy of all of that right now. The magnificence of that. The splendor of that. the crystals the birds the fish the bugs everything is so on one hand possibly crystal clear and yet so many layers it's like looking through an iridescent glass. That's what the castle looks like. It's iridescent. Your sage wants you to know that all of this is here for you to use, to ground, to explore, And that your sage will walk you through and there's this beautiful stairway that takes you into this area And as you get closer with your sage, feel how you are this beautiful iridescent energy as well. Your sage encourages you. that this is like coming home. That you are a part of all of this. And in among all of this incredible wonder that you see, there is a bracelet or a necklace or a ring or earrings, some sort of jewelry like piece that is for you.
you may already own this piece or you may have yet to come into a bond, a physical bond with this piece of jewelry. Possession is the wrong word. That's why I use bond. If you already have this piece of jewelry, understand how magical it is. How powerful it is. When you wear it, wear it with that wisdom. You may remember where you've gotten this piece, or it may have just appeared in your life. If you still do not have this piece, that is okay. It will appear in your life with no expectations and no limitations and being okay with when it, it does appear. Take a look around again at all the magical feelings that are all around you. And your sage guides you back towards those stairs. And even though you are departing that area, feel how that energy resonates through you still of that beautiful space the magic of all the beings that you've seen. And that some of that lives within you at all times. Feel how your little you is so involved in the magic of that. Take a breath, connect with your heart and lungs. And feel how the sage is bringing you into that beautiful energy vortex, how you're traveling through that tube. How you feel as though you are winged yourself. And you are. You are like an angelic being coming through this energy vortex. Coming back to the beginning where you saw where you first saw that energy vortex portal. Your sage helps you to come out of that. A 
and take a good look at your sage again. Hold hands palm to palm. And as your sage gives thanks to you, give thanks to your sage. You may even ask if your sage has a name that they may or may not divulge at this time. You can ask for clarity on that name if you like, if you have been given one, or if you're unclear. Ask how you can develop a closer relationship with this guide, with this sage. Make a commitment to yourself. To be in contact with this sage. To foster the relationship with this sage. And make a commitment to honor the gift of this jewelry. Whether it's in your basket of tools or whether it has yet to still come to you. And again, please give thanks to your sage. Thank yourself for this incredible journey. Feel the energy of connection through your heart and lungs. The energy flowing through your physical body. coming back into this sacred space. Coming back into your physical body. And so it is. Beautiful. Thank you all so very much for participating. 
I would love to hear what some of you have to say about what has just transpired. I know for myself, I felt a lot of emotion at one point. Um, and some of that very well may have been coming from myself. I, uh, I wear this bracelet. I'm just going to make sure I can see it on the camera here. I wear this bracelet all the time with a bear on it. And it's a leather bracelet. And it literally appeared out of nowhere in my basement. Oh, I'm guessing five years ago. And, and no one, I asked all my family members, no one knew where it came from. And I was literally just shown by my sage that it was from this area. So it was a very emotional moment for me. Uh, and I would love for anyone to share what they may have experienced there. Um, I'm going to just go through the list. You can choose to speak or choose not to speak. Mehar, I'll speak. I'll start with you. You may have to unmute yourself. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Wow, that that was amazing. It was just just amazing. Very 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 beautiful. Yeah, it did feel like you were in a different dimension, <laughs> a different world. Yeah. Yes, there must be a different place, different universe somewhere, you know. Mm -hmm. So peaceful, so clear. Wow. Even though, you know, you kept, I kept getting, you know, distracted. And it kept going back like it was so strong. It was amazing. Yeah. A big message there, we are one, you know. We are one. Very and we so. can, yeah. Thank you so much, Sandra. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Shen Chi, do you have the ability to speak? That's okay. I'm glad you're here. How about yourself, Carrie? You'll have to unmute yourself. Yes, you thank go. you. Oh my gosh, Sandra, that was really beautiful. I got three minutes in, um, you already started and um, you were starting with the palms and my palms, oh, um, there are times when they are so energized that they hurt Been there. and I'm, I'm like, I've been told that I need to study psychometry, which is the, the, the hand things and so forth. And, um, you know, when I try to feel things and then get, you know, a history and stuff, I'm not really getting that, but I am, I, I know my palms, those are so key. So when you did the palm to palm, and so forth um made so much i mean it really touched me um anyway the whole your whole um process is just really touched my heart so yes more information on what is this is this i think it must be my healing energy somehow very much so uh so essentially when um when I first started out doing uh, uh, Reiki and orthobionomy, <clears throat> that was back in uh, like 2003. But later on, uh, like a decade later, I would be, you know, going places and my hands were hurting all the time. Like when I was driving and stuff to the point that I was actually shifting hands uh, because they would bother me so much. And my husband actually made a comment one day about what's going on with your hands and I'm like, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to go make a doctor's appointment and find out because my hands, the palms of my hands are just <laughs> aching and I'm unsure what was going on. And probably within months of that, I, I, I didn't actually make a doctor's appointment. But I, what happened was, is I actually started to do Reiki. I started to do orthobionomy a lot more frequently. And what I discovered was that as I was working with energy with people, that my hands that was the hand that was like you'll hear me speak about oh my hands are burning right now that is like my talisman that is my indicator that i am making this super strong connection with the divine source right now that that the energy that's coming through is for the greatest good 
and and that's how I work is by my hands my energy in my hands so I can um, I can do distance work with people using the energy in my hands coming through my hands like it's not coming from me understand that very clearly because you don't want to drain yourself so if you if you consciously set up this thing with your guide saying that you're they're working through your hands that's what it is 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 the overlighting diva of healing look her up she's very important important to you because that's who's working through your hands is the overlighting diva of healing and the white brotherhood that's um uh, the medical assistance program by Michelle Small, right? Uh, the, these, this energy of these groups at uh, the white brotherhood is a spiritual medical team that changes between all different kinds of medical people or medical spirits, I guess. Um, that's what's working through your hands. And that's just like, my hands are on fire talking about this. Okay. Mm. So that's, mm -hmm. that's the energy of healing coming through your hands. Makes sense. I, I, I sense it. Yeah. So yeah, there's the new journey too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. You answered some questions for me. <laughs> Wonderful. Cynthia, how about yourself? I unmuted you. Oh, thank you. Carrie. Yeah. Um, I felt very peaceful again. And, um, when, um, I saw another like shepherd looking person when I, you said, asked if they would show, you know, themselves. And um, when you said, ask how you could get to know them better, I heard med meditation. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the piece of jewelry, um, what I saw was a heart-shaped um, blue topaz stones all on the outside of it and then like diamonds in the wow. center and one was a brooch and the other one was a ring and that's what came to me when um, I was, you know, when you said about the piece of jewelry and then um, what I found interesting and I don't know why this was happening was I was getting I was getting um, relatives that had passed oh, mm. coming into my mind during this today beautiful yeah. it's a day of Thanksgiving for you right now and how beautiful that these people are coming to you to thank you for your being who you are for being open what a beautiful gift. I, I didn't really thank you for, you know, helping me to look at it that way because I really didn't know why I was getting them popping in as yes. we were doing this. I, I didn't quite understand, but relatives that had passed away, I was see, kept seeing them, you know, so. Yeah. A lot well, of emotion you. coming up with that. Thank you, Cynthia, for sharing. I do want to point out to you and the others that if you currently do not have this piece no. of jewelry, then do feel the energy of wearing it anyway. Okay. Okay? Because it's yours regardless of whether you are in have it physically or not. It is, your, it is yours. Okay? So feel the energy of wearing it. Like make the conscious decision that you're putting it on at one point or something like that. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Thank Thanks. you for sharing, Cynthia. Colleen, how about yourself? Um, am I unmuted? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought my son had left for work already. Oh, that's all right. Didn't bother um, us at all. <laughs> I just vibrant colors oh beautiful oranges and pinks and um he took me to the edge of a cliff overlooking the ocean with um kind of misty and there were mountains and things in the and cities floating in the sky wow it's kind of really surreal i didn't get a real clear image of him but i got the sense that he was small oriental long braid in the back and a red tie 
and for me, a red tie is my dad. Oh, beautiful. He always wore a red tie. That came through a couple of times. And then my jewelry was a uh, infinity symbol. Mm. And I have, uh, yeah, I have a necklace with the infinity symbols. So I guess I better start wearing it again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no pressure. Don't pressure yourself. No. It's, it's, you know what, I, I make, I've made the conscious decision to wear this bracelet all the time, but that's my decision. And there are days where I have uh, forgotten to put it on and I choose not to get caught up in the emotion of, oh my God, I, I forgot to put it on. You know what? There's a reason. There's a reason why it's not on. Maybe it's clearing, maybe it's doing its own thing and stuff. So allow yourself to, um, to let the energies draw you to that necklace. Like if you feel like getting up when we're done and putting it on, then, then go for it. Right. Um, yeah. if, 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 if it ends up being, you forget about it and you end up putting it on tomorrow or the next day, then that is what it is. Okay. No pressure. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing, Colleen. Thank you. I'm just going to go through the list here. See who else. Uh, Via Rica. And you'll have to unmute. I'm unable to. My um, grounding guide was, it is one that I met before, like two years ago, but I didn't know who it is. I asked him, I know his name is John, but I didn't know how, what was his role, but he came up today to show up yeah. today as a, like uh, my grounding guide. And uh, <laughs> he was like, I don't know if you watch the movie Robin Hood, it, it was that priest in a uh, brown robe with um, and uh, short hair. Okay. And he, he still was John, anyway. And he took me to that room that was, and I got a blue, big uh, ruby pendant. I don't have oh. it. <laughs> but like you said, I can't imagine wearing it. It was a beautiful, big one. And uh, his, his message was that every morning when you get up to be grounded, imagine that uh, you hold my hands. I so, love that. Yeah. And uh, I asked him, and he, and he told me that uh, uh, before, any time uh, when I go in a meditation, in a meadow, uh, it was a big uh, snake there. Coiled up, coiled up, so no harm, but okay. it was there. And I asked him, what about that snake? And he said, I sent it uh, for you for drowning. I said, okay. <laughs> I didn't oh, know. Why. The snake was there. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's mm -hmm. so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that's magnificent. I'm, I'm, I'm just so thrilled with what, uh, what you've gotten. That's, that's so incredible. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for the meditation. Uh, Maria, how about yourself? Oh, I'm here to do this. Uh, there we go. I, I met uh, a woman that I think appeared in a dream some years ago. And she has long white hair, hair and she's very much connected to nature. And she took me out on a walk in nature. And uh, she, she's very calm, calming, sort of connected to both nature and magic. And um, I, the jewelry piece I got was a necklace. I never seen it. But it, uh, it was a green stone and it was hanged in small sort of whitish uh, stones. And it is, was a symbol symbolization of uh, two things I feel very drawn to in nature, which is, which is moss and uh, mist or fog. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. I mm -hmm. do recommend that anyone who saw something that they don't already have, 
that you draw a picture of it. And it really doesn't matter how good a picture it is, but it's really nice to have something kind of drawn of it so that you've got that image still. Okay. Mm. Thank you for sharing, Maria. That was beautiful. Thank you. I, Sheila was with us, but I think she's gone now. Um, and I also have a, a, a 587 number there. Did you want to share with us? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. Hello? 587? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, beautiful. It's Betty from Hinton. Oh, hi, Betty. <laughs> hi. 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 Uh, yeah, I kind of missed the, the, the first two minutes. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, it's, yeah. So, no, it was a, it was a, it, it was a powerful and amazing experience. I, I had, um, when we first started grounding, there was an eye that just was staring straight, me straight in the eye, this big eye. And then I could see the outline of the eyebrow. And I'm thinking, oh, I think that's me. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And it was just there for a few minutes. And it was just like, yeah, it was beautiful, actually. I'm just looking and we're just glazing each other's eyes. And then as the grounding went through the very last part, when you were talking about, you know, uh, the, you know, grounding in the ground again and the balls under the feet, I think. Right. Yeah. Uh, if I do recall. Well, guess what? I just started giggling. Oh, right on. <laughs> it's like my, my body was just being tickled. It was that little me just, you know, I, I don't know if it was a little me coming out and just saying, oh, it was just amazing. Like I was just, and I couldn't stop laughing. I'm thinking, oh God, I wish I was, I, I wasn't muted right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. It was really quite cool. And uh, the jewelry, oh my gosh. So the jewelry is, is yes, it is a piece of jewelry that I gifted um, my mother-in-law and she's since passed. And somebody is in possession of it, and I don't know who. And it's sitting in this, I think, in this in this velvet box right now. Wow. So somebody has it, and it's something I gave, and I do want that. But I, you know, when you said just if you don't have it yet, it'll just come in time right now because there's a lot of animosity going on yes. right now. So it's comforting to know that someday, yes, I know I will be in possession of that. So it was, you know, I, you know, the last Christmas we spent together that I gifted it for her. So right. it, it really made me feel, you know, warm inside and thinking, yes, you know, I know it's, it, it's, it's there and somebody has it right now, but it's just not the right timing. Yeah. And um, yeah, the, the vibrant colors I was seeing and swirls of lights, um, you know, um, swirl of white lights constantly um, and vibrant colors like purples. And then all of a sudden a shot of, of orange just came and it just spurred it right out, right? <laughs> it just it, So it was yeah. quite amazing. So, and Mary was my contact and she is, um, she's very youthful and she's like an angel and she floats constantly and i seen feathers too like i was soaring above the clouds and um that's really you know yeah it's quite amazing and then i was awoken by a um um it's a woodpecker and i have my house's logs on the outside yeah. so it was all of a sudden that's what disturbed me uh or you know broke my you know the came out of the meditation right right right, right. <laughs> so yeah so look up the symbolism quite of a that. while look up the symbolism yeah, of the woodpecker okay yeah okay i will i will and he's been going in all corners of the house too so interesting yeah yes oh that is interesting that is interesting very cool mm -hmm. well right on thank mm -hmm. you so much for sharing betty i'm really thrilled that you're here Thank you. Uh, it was great. Thank you right for on. sharing too. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, everyone who's on, whether you had this incredible journey where you are actually saw as much as some of you are, are speaking of seeing like myself, uh, or whether you had um, just a sense of calmness during the thing, during the process, regardless of where you are on your journey, understand that you do have a grounding guide whether you physically made a connection with this grounding guide or not in this process, you do have a grounding guide. Okay. And, um, we are all on different parts of our journey. So we have the different abilities to step in and get what we get 
during our journey. And as you go further on your journey, you will develop the skills to become even more so in these spaces, in these processes. And by participating each day like you have been, that um, sense of connection is growing. Being open is primarily the most important thing with no expectations, with no limitations, and being okay with the outcome regardless of what it is is the most powerful place to sit and be, okay? Thank you guys so much. Um, really appreciate all of you being here. And uh, we're over the hour already. However, if anyone has any last questions that they would like to ask, feel free to, please. Uh, wave your hand if you've got a video out. <laughs> um, otherwise. We will say uh, farewell until tomorrow. Um, and I uh, really appreciate each and every one of you being here. It's incredible to have the people that I have, the beautiful souls that I have in my tribe. And I honor each and every one of you. You're so beautiful. And I'm so thrilled that you are part of my path. I really am. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.